So what's the best pentatonic exercise? Well, it's a bit of a contrived question, obviously, because it depends on who you are, it depends on your skill set, depends on where you are in your, your particular journey. But I thought I'd have a bit of fun with it and see if I could answer it and just pick one exercise that I think is the best. So what criteria I'm going to use for this? Well, for me, it needs to be challenging to both hands. It doesn't need to be, it shouldn't be left hand dominant or right hand dominant. You should be able to get a lot out of it. It, it should be something that develops you as a guitarist as a whole. So if you practice it, it should be an exercise that you generally improve as a guitarist. You don't just get good at playing this one exercise. It should be something that continues to challenge you as you develop as a guitarist. So, so not particularly a beginner's exercise or just an advanced exercise as well. It should also be something that you can use in a real solo, something that you can actually adapt and take advantage of, of the, um, the skills that you've developed while, while you're learning this exercise. So those are the basic criteria that I'm going to use to choose. So what I did was I had a look at some past exercises, some past ideas that I put forward, and I shortlisted these down to a group of three. So these are the three that I think are, are probably the most generally useful pentatonic exercises that you can start to develop. And then I picked my favorite out of the three. So let's work through the two runners up first. So the first one is an exercise that are called triplets or groups of three. So by triplets, what I mean is the class of exercise and they all sound very similar like this. And I tend to group together um, descending threes, ascending threes, similar kinds of triplet lines as well, because they all kind of have the same left hand movement, which is this. Hopefully you can see that. And the right hand, you can use a variety of right hand techniques. You can use slurs like I'm doing there. can pick every note. You can use hybrid picking. You can use a technique called rakes. So there's a lot of different ways of using these. This is a whole class of movement. It's, it's very important when you, uh, to learn how to do this when you're playing over pentatonics because there's a whole series of movements that you can do and introduce into music as well. So again, this is a class of, of shape that you hear a lot in guitar solos. Many guitarists use this kind of movement. So, so it's very useful when, when it comes to actually playing music as well. And that's the other thing that I really like about this. The, the cons, the reasons why I didn't pick this as my favourite movement are firstly, it really does have that strong triplet sound, so it doesn't really lend itself to you know, straight 16th note lines. And the other thing is, these, these kinds of movements get easier the more, more you advance as well. So uh, uh, there, are other, there are other exercises that we can do that, that maintain their difficulty even as you an, advance as a player. The second one is a little bit more tricky this time. It's something that I like to call rotational sweeps. Let me demonstrate them for you. So by rotational sweeps, what I mean is the class of exercise that look a bit like this. And the nice thing about these is that this is a great partner exercise to that first one that I've been talking about because you tend to stay on one side of the pentatonic shape or the other. And so that's, that's why it's so different to the first exercise and why it's so useful to learn alongside the first exercise. I call it rotational sweeps because it's, it's such a great exercise to learn to sweep with. Because you can sweep The other nice thing is that if you want to practice alternate picking as well, or my finger style technique, it's a really challenging exercise for that as well. 
it's also taxing to the left hand because the left hand has to do so much more to control the strings as well so you don't allow the strings to bleed together you have to do things like finger rolls and lift fingers to control the strings so only one string is sounding at the moment and this means that this is really quite a bit harder than the first exercise as well this this remains reasonably tough even as you advance as a guitarist which I quite like as well it's it's an exercise that I will come back to um, cons the reasons why I, I don't necessarily pick this as my favorite exercise is that I, I rarely use this the extended lines based on this when I'm playing a real guitar solo it's not a sound that I particularly li like so I don't use it but it's a useful technique to build on so what's my favorite well, my favourite is something I call fives, or cascading fives, or moving fives. Let me demonstrate them for you. So what do I mean by fives then? So fives to me are movements like this. So they could either be descending fives as I'm doing there, or you could play ascending fives as well. But moving groups of five around the neck whilst playing pentatonics. This is definitely my favourite exercise when I'm trying to build up my skills playing the pentatonic scale. And the reason why is it's challenging to both hands. Both hands are doing an awful lot for the for the left hand. You're moving. You're covering quite a bit of space across the pentatonics. You've got the string skips in there as well, which really challenge for the right hand. Uh, because it's a group of five, because it's an odd number of notes, it means the picking's that much more difficult, especially if you're using my, my finger style tone. Which means synchronization between the two hands is really tough as well. It's a great way of working on that. And in terms of an exercise, when you get proficient at five, fives, you'll find you're proficient across a whole shape. You can move across the shape much more easily if you can move across in groups of five as well. So there's a great crossover between playing fives and playing other movements as well. And then finally, from a musical perspective, uh, fives are great because they're really quite ambiguous. You can use fives over triplet patterns, you can use fives over 16th note type patterns as well. This, this kind of ambiguity allows you to play around syncopation. It creates nice syncopated lines that fit really quite nicely over the top of the music that you're playing. And, and as I say, that this does get used a lot as well. If you listen to the music of people like Eric Johnson, Joe Bonamassa, you'll hear those guys using rolling, descending fives or ascending fives in just the way that I've been using at the moment. So that's why I love this kind of movement. So that's my opinion at the moment. Do you agree with me? Let me know in the comments below, or, or what is your favourite pentatonic exercise? Anyway, that's it this week. A bit of fun, um, and we'll chat next time. Goodbye.